Come on, will you stand to your feet all over the room? That is a declaration that is personal. When you let God know that you believe him, that you trust him. I believe that that's the only need that God has is the need for somebody to trust him. And when you trust him and when you have faith in him, it moves him in your situation. And so will you lift up your hands all over the room? If you gotta close your eyes, if you've got to, if you wanna keep them open, but you ought to begin to worship God and let him know that without you, I am nothing. Without you, I would fail. That, that's what the old song used to say. Without you, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. So God, I don't have no other choice but to believe you today. I don't have any other source, anybody else that I can trust the way I trust you. Not my job, not my financial situation, not the doctor. You are everything that I need. And I'm here on a Sunday morning to let you know, God, I still believe. With all that's going on in my life, with all the enemy tried to do, with all the enemy tried to put in my way, Lord. are standing to your feet it is appropriate for us to celebrate leadership it is appropriate it is necessary for us to honor we we don't we don't do it like we should anymore but honor is still in order and today we have the opportunity to honor the servant of the Lord whom God has placed here at Mount Moriah, who God has given as your leader, as your pastor, as your spiritual eyes and guide. And today I celebrate, amen, the Reverend Robert Lowe. Can we thank God for him? Oh, y'all from Queens, y'all ain't loud enough. somebody holler I know I know Queens is a little more you know y'all a little more reserved some of y'all from Long Island 
But I thank God for you. I want you to know that I take this as an honor and a privilege. We were talking in the back and I was remembering of being in his presence with my mother. And I probably have said it before, but it's such an honor when your parents' friends can become people that you admire and look up to and people that encourage you, amen. And so I consider it an honor to be here every time you call. I am so grateful for Mount Moriah. I am so grateful for your life and for what you have been here, your consistency in ministry. And um, I'm glad you're still alive. I said, I'm glad you're alive. Somebody that's glad he's alive and well. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Amen. And so today, I love you, I appreciate you, and I am honored for this privilege. I'm not going to be long, amen, but I thank God for all that has gone forth already. Y'all done, y'all got the singing, and y'all got, y'all got, y'all just had everything already. So y'all don't need me to do any of that. <laughs> Genesis chapter number 49. Genesis chapter number 49, and I just want to speak a word to encourage the people of God. Amen. Like I said, your leader is always so encouraging, and, um, and I, I, I am honored, amen, to be here and to be able to celebrate what the Lord is doing. Amen. So Genesis chapter... Number 49, beginning our reading at verse number 22. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. And I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life I can't praise you enough even if I try cause oh you've been God you've been so good oh you Whose testimony is that this morning? So good, and I can't praise you enough. Oh, you, my life, I just can't thank you enough. Oh, even if I try, cause you been. Somebody lift up your hands. You It's 
it's not, it's not enough. Come on, praise him right there. Genesis chapter number 49, beginning our reading at verse number 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the almighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee, and by the almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hill. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brothers. The Bible says that even though he was sorely grieved, he was shot and hated. His bow abode in strength. And the blessing of the Lord shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of him that was separated from his brethren. Just for a few moments, I want to talk from the subject, favor is the pits. Favor is the pits. Father, we thank you and pray that in this next few moments, Father, that I submit myself to you. I submit my voice, my mind. Everything is in your hand. And I pray, God, that you would speak through me and that you would open the ears and the hearts of your people, that they would receive your word and be drawn closer to you as our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Favor is the pits. Many times my mother said to me, this is, this is just the pits. Okay, Th this is the pits. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what's happening. And it is, it is a saying that refers to uh, something just being a mess, being horrible. Seasons are funny because they are unpredictable. We're, we're in a time right now where the weather is the pits because you don't know if it's fall you don't know if it's summer you don't know if it's winter e any day this could change and so when seasons are unpredictable it leaves us annoyed and frustrated not understanding what is happening it leaves us in an unfortunate unpleasant situation and as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. Because sometimes your life seems as if it should be in one season, but it is in another. It, it, it would seem like after all we've been through, even through the pandemic and, and so on, that we would be in a, a season that looks like what it's supposed to be. But sometimes the season you're in is unpredictable. It is not what you see. It is not 
what you expected. Somebody was saying in the beginning of the service that we've got to have expectation. Somebody was saying that we've got to expect a miracle. And the truth of the matter is expectation does not come or does not work when things look like they're supposed to. You've got to have an expectation when things are contrary to what they are supposed to be. And so uh, when you're going through what you're going through, sometimes it does not indicate the season of favor that you are in. Sometimes you can be in a season of favor and and it does not look like it. Things always look better on the outside than they do on the inside. And people who do not have the favor of God will see favor as one thing. As, as a, in comparison to the people who do have favor. When you know that there is favor on your life, then you got to understand that it does not always look like the blessing and the house and the car and the relationship and the money. The favor of God does not always look like what you think it will because it is the pits. Look at somebody and tell them sometimes favor is the pits. Sometimes to be favored puts me under attack. Sometimes to be favored puts me in the devil's target. Sometimes I can't get a witness in the building. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's the pit. And so when we look at our text today, I, I, I could have chosen to go from where uh, another a portion of scripture uh, concerning Joseph. But in Genesis chapter number 49, the Bible lets us know that Joseph's father, Jacob, is pronouncing, he has called all of his sons to his bedside. And he's called them to his bedside because he is old in age. Hallelujah. He is uh, now up in age and and possibly getting ready to die and so he calls all of his sons to his bedside not to 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 uh speak any regret about life over them and and not to apologize for anything he may or may not have done but the bible lets us know that Jacob brings his sons to his bedside in order to pronounce a prophetic blessing over their lives Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, there's something on me. Hallelujah, there is something on me. And the truth is, sometimes you've got to have a person in your life that speaks prophetically over you. That's why we're here to celebrate the man of God and the life of the leader. Because God has sent him as someone to speak blessing over our lives. Every sermon, tell somebody, every sermon, every song every service there is a blessing in store for you and so he calls them to his bedside to speak over their lives hallelujah and again he does not speak regret to them he does not speak apologies to them but he is speaking the blessing over them hallelujah and so the bible lets us know that he goes down down the list of all of his sons and he knows each and every one of them he knows who they are and what they've done and their proclivity and he knows hallelujah exactly the blessing to speak over them I, I might as well stop here and say I'm so grateful that God knows me Look, look at a neighbor, tell them, neighbor, I don't want your blessing. I, I want the blessing that God has for me because he knows me. He knows what I can handle. He knows what I can't handle. He knows exactly what I need. And the truth is, just like Joseph is speaking over his sons, he is speaking a specific blessing to each and every one of the 
him. Look at your neighbor and tell him God's got a blessing tailor made for you. Tell a neighbor on the other side, God has got a blessing that is tailor made for you. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's going to fit you just right. All you got to do is hold on a little while longer. Look at somebody, tell them, don't you get jealous of nobody else's blessing because yours is around the corner. I need you to holler. A blessing is on the way. Y'all didn't holler it. I need somebody that I feel the Holy Ghost. I need you to holler it like you believe it because I don't have to see what God is doing in order to know that God is working. Tell somebody a blessing is on the way. It is a tailor-made blessing for me. And so this father is speaking prophetically a tailor-made blessing over his sons. And I, I, I don't want to go down each one of them. But, but he gets to Joseph. And when he gets to Joseph, the Bible said that he begins to speak that Joseph is fruitful. That, that Joseph is so fruitful that, that his vines run over the walls. In, in other words, he is so blessed. And, and he begins to then say all of the stuff that Joseph went through. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Look, first he says he is fruitful. And, and so fruitful that his vines are all running over the walls. But, but let me tell you how he got to this kind of fruitfulness. I, I can't get a witness in the building. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you want to be something in God, you're going to have to go through the pits. If you really want the favor of God in operation in your life, if you want fruit bearing in your life, you're going to have to go through the pits. And I believe that this father begins to remind them of all that Joseph had gone through. Because even from a child, Joseph was favored by his father. Even from a young man, Joseph had the favor of God on his life. The Bible said he was the child of Jacob's old age. And Jacob favored him with a coat of many colors. We know that Joseph had a dream that his brothers and his father would serve him. And when he told that dream, when he said what God had showed him, the Bible said that his brothers became jealous of him, jealous of what he said, and jealous of the favor on him, and jealous of what his father had given to him. Oh, this is from a young man. And the Bible said his brothers were so jealous that they sold him into slavery. They even tried to kill him. They contemplated, I can't get a witness in the building, taking his life. But when the favor of God is on you, even when people contemplate what they intend to do to you, it still won't work. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I don't even know what they thought about me. All I know is that I got favor and I'm still alive today. Oh, God, even with the enemy's intentions, even with the enemy trying to come after me, God still kept him. And the Bible lets us know that even after his brothers threw him in to the pit, he was sold in to slavery. He then goes, hallelujah, into Egypt and God still prospers him in a strange land. He goes in to Potiphar's house and God still favors him. Hallelujah, Jesus. He goes and is tempted by Potiphar's 
Potiphar's wife accused of something that he did not even do and then convicted of something he was only accused of. Where are the people in the building that'll say there were times in my life where I was accused and I was even convicted? I, I, they said that I was guilty without any evidence but even in a jail cell God put favor on my life tell your neighbor once you got the favor of God it doesn't matter where you find yourself oh I need somebody that'll holler it doesn't matter where I find myself favor is alongside me He's more than the whole world. They threw him in the prison, but even down in the prison, Joseph has favor. Hallelujah, the butler. Hallelujah, thrown in the prison. Knows that, that there is a dream or the butler has a dream. And Joseph interprets the dream. The butler gets out of the prison. Joseph says, don't forget me when you get in the palace. And the Bible said that the butler did just that. But I said it before that God only has a need to be believed. And if you trust God, whatever the enemy is trying to do, tell your neighbor it won't work. The Bible said that even after the butler forgot him, that, that, that Pharaoh has a dream. And so the need arises for the skill that Joseph has. And that need is what brought him up out of the prison. He interprets the dream. And the Bible said that he finds favor even with Hallelujah. I came to tell somebody that favor is the pit. But the truth of the matter is the favor of God is not activated on your life until you go through something. The favor of God cannot come to fruition in your life until there is a prison. You survived the pit. You survived the prison. You survived. 
That favor is not just for you to look good. Favor is not just so you can act like you're better than everybody else. But God gives favor for an assignment. I said God gives you favor for an assignment. And if you look over jo Joseph's life, you'll see that every time his favor was activated. It was for an assignment. I can't get a witness in the building. I said every time his favor showed up, it was so he could do something for God. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, if you really want God's favor, you better tell him yes. I don't know who that's for. I said I don't know who that's for. I don't know who that's for, but if you really want favor, stop praying for it. Stop hoping for it. Stop thinking about it and tell God yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll say it. Yes, I'll preach it. Yes, I'll be it. And when you say yes, the favor, it'll drop on you. A super
Joseph went down, he came up with favor. Every time Joseph went down, he came up with the favor of God on his life. Hallelujah. And you got to understand that the favor is down in the pits. The favor is down in the prison. And the people that are willing to go down and get what's yours. The people that are willing to go down into the dark. Into, look at somebody and tell them neighbor. If favor is there, I'll go get I said, tell your neighbor, if favor is there, I'll go get it. I'll go in the dark. I won't be scared because God is with me. I'll go down. I'll do it all over again. Oh, God, just to have the favor of God over my life. Tell somebody, I'll go get it. But when we get to Genesis 49, his father brings up the fact that the archers sorely grieved him, that they shot at him, that they hated him. But his boat <laughs> remained in strength. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, even after all I've been through, I still got strength because God, God is, he's holding me up. And every time that the devil tried to pull me down, God gave me a little more strength. And so today, I speak strength over the man of God today I say that even after all of the hate all of the grief all of the shots that you still got strength in your bow you still got a sling you still got stones and you got enough strength to sling them at the enemy. Look at your neighbor and tell the neighbor, not only do I have a bow, not only do I have the stone, but I've got strength hey, to fight every battle. I've got strength to overcome every enemy. I've got strength to fight the good fight. Say it. After all of the people that shot at him and grieved him and hated on him, that there was still strength in his bow, strength in his arms, and strength in his hands. God, I thank you. Because he was made strong by the almighty God. The, the text that I love is 26. And it said, the blessing of thy father have prevailed over the blessings of my progenitors. In, in other words, you more blessed than the last generation. Look, look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm more blessed than generations before me. And see, some of y'all didn't get excited. Some of y'all didn't get excited about your own blessing. But let me see if this will excite you. If you more blessed than the last generation, what's going to happen for the next generation? 
Y'all still, y'all don't want it for the kids. Y'all don't want it for the grandchildren. Y'all don't want it for the nieces and nephews. Tell somebody if I'm more blessed than them, then my children and my children. That's the blessing that Jacob was speaking. I tell you to open up your mouth and speak a blessing over the next generation. The next level of Mariah is already blessed. blessed than even I was and so as a father I'm speaking a blessing over the next generation this is the one that blessed me he said the blessings shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of him who was separated from his brothers his brothers had just as much favor on them. But because they didn't have what Joseph had, they were jealous of him. And sometimes you got to be careful about watching what other people get. Because you'll sabotage your own blessing. God got a measure of favor for each and every one of us. And so I'm not looking at yours because I'm a miss mine. I'm not looking over here because I'm going to miss what's going on over here. He said the blessing is on Joseph's head and on his crown. But he said this is the same Joseph that was separated, <clears throat> hated by his brothers. Which means that the same favor that was on Joseph in Christ's crucifixion that was on Joseph while he was being persecuted is the same favor that's on him now. This is later in his life, y'all. Look at somebody and tell him, you getting ready to get to a place where you don't have to deal with the pits no more. I just, I'm finished. I'm finished. But look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, you getting ready to hit a season. Tell your neighbor it won't always be like this because God is, he's perfecting everything that's concerning me and sooner or later it's about to turn. I need you to run to a neighbor and say neighbor it's about to turn. You won't have to deal with the pits no more. The enemy you see
season it's the same favor that's on you right now tell somebody I'm getting ready to experience the overflow one neighbor she needs somebody to praise God with her don't don't let nobody praise him praise him by themselves. because when this favor comes on me God might use me to bless you when, when this favor shows up in full force God might use me to bless your children I need you to get a neighbor and say we can do want you to believe that the pit indicates something else the pit indicates that God is preparing you for something else 
It, it doesn't indicate that you've lost. It's not an indication that you don't have it. It's not an indication that God is not with you. As a matter of fact, it's the total opposite. I told y'all these seasons are contrary to what it really is. You are in a season of favor and there is nothing like famine to prove God's favor over your life. When other folk don't have it, God is getting ready to make a way for his people. I just need to see that there are some of y'all that are committed to God. Committed to ministry. Committed to leadership. Look at somebody and tell them the favor is not just for you. But there is an assignment. There's work you got to do. And when the favor shows up, you got to be in the right place at the right time. Lift up your hands all over the house. this the birthday celebration of this man of God praise him I speak favor I speak favor I speak favor you won't be weary in well-doing because there's still strength in your bow man of God there's still creativity there's still wisdom more now than ever in you there is much strength and what you must get done in this season is going to bless your children and your children's children and that's why you can't give up now you can't throw in the towel now because generational blessing is connected to you and so father we thank you for this word we thank you for the pits of our life. Everything that was the pits. Every person that walked in and out that was the pits. Thank you because it prepared me for favor. It got me ready for my assignment. And so, Father, I speak strength to your people today that whatever is next, they'll be able to do. Whatever is next, they'll be able to accomplish Whatever is next, there's enough strength and favor and wisdom in the, in the church, in their houses to accomplish the work that you've put to our hands. We thank you for this man of God and we pray God that you would continue to add years to his life. Hallelujah. We ask you God to continue to strengthen him in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you've already done, but we're in expectation of what you will do. And we believe God in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise like you know you got favor. Come on, give God praise like you know you got favor. I said give him praise like you know you got favor.